All right, we are live. We are live. Hey, how's it going, folks? I'm so glad you're here. I am truly excited and hyped about this uh, this webinar because it's all about you guys. It's all about uh, how we can learn from each other and get um, to where we want to be in life. You know, we're talking often we talk about our sexual health, but really that's your overall health. And so we put together a spectacular webinar to go over the food aspects of it, the most important aspects. And, you know, uh, I want to thank you guys who are hopped on early. I uh, appreciate you joining us. Uh, this is going to be a magnificent, uh, uh, wondrous event here. I mean, I'm truly, you know, inspired by the number of folks who have gone to our, uh, our YouTube channel and have you know made comments about they've they've listened to the things that i've talked about uh which are just all very practical uh and useful um hints but it's it's worked for them uh we've had guys on there who said that they've they've actually just in two weeks uh, just in a week in just a couple of days they made changes to their lifestyle and they saw the improvement and that's uh truly important we need you know for for folks to uh we need for folks to know <laughs> that it's important to make these changes and why to make those changes. We, we've been lied to. And, and I'll talk about that in this webinar. We've been lied to for a long time about what you're supposed to do with your health, what you're supposed to eat. Uh, it's always been about getting money. <laughs> it's never been about what's really helpful for you. Um, you know, so we, we get end up buying a whole bunch of crap, which ends up taking us to the hospital where they give us more crap and we're not living a natural life. And that's problematic. So that's what we're going to be talking about, how we can get back to that natural life, how we can get back to that, that natural way of living where our testosterone levels are high, um, you know, having morning erections, having, you know, just being able to live life fully for much longer. That's what we're here about. That's what we're here to do. And so, you know, I just want to give a, a couple of more minutes for, for for folks to jump on so that we can get rocking and rolling here. Um, we'll just give them a, another minute. But it's really, really important that, you know, not only do we get this information, but we share the information with folks. You have to you have to because um, especially, you know, it's important for our, our, our children. You know, this is this generation that's coming up. It's the first generation that has said they will not live as long as we do. <laughs> that's that's scary. Uh, that's because we've been doing some things that have been wrong for so long and it's it's caught up to us um, and we have to make those changes. So we now hit upon the one o'clock hour. I want to thank everybody who's here, everybody who's ready to get rocking and rolling with this webinar, how to get harder erections naturally. And I am the sexual performance coach, Brian, aka Uncle B. And you know, it, it's 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 just exciting to get this whole thing started. But for, of course, we have to go with, uh, do you hear me? <laughs> do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Yeah. Uh, please go to the polls and and give us a shout out. Let us know. We want to make sure that the sound is good and that we can rock and roll with this webinar. All right. All right. Okay. Good, good, good. Looks like everything is in order. So let's get started. I uh, just want to give you a couple of pieces of information about myself. My name is Brian, a.k.a. Uncle B, um, and I am the founder and owner of Airs Naturals, a plant-based medicine company. We've been around for a long time, uh, since 1999, and really African Fly, which is a liquid aphrodisiac. That's our first product, our most beloved product. It's an aphrodisiac that does work for men and women, and the big question is always, does it work? Well, if you're selling something for 20 years, it better. And so it does work. And it during the process of discovering African Fly, using African Fly, working with different clients, um, just had to do a bunch of research and you know, doing when we're doing blogging. And so, you know, we have our email uh magazine fly zones, and we also have uh um our blog that's online at Africanfly.com. When you get an opportunity, go ahead and check that out. It has a ton of information. We're sort of putting all that information, what well, <laughs> a good deal of that information into this webinar. Um, I've also written a couple of books. Uh, one book, How to Get Harder Erections Naturally, that's following this webinar series, and that will be coming out shortly. So look out for that. Now, I do want to say that with all of 
everything I just said, you know, the research and all that good stuff, experiences, the best teacher. And, you know, I've gone through life where it was like, oh, everything's working. I'm taking African fly. I have no problems. Then I got older and life changed. And that's what happened to a lot of you guys. You're like, what, what just happened? Why am I not the way that I used to be? And so I took the information, took my experience, hopped online. And um, since February 2019, just last year, I have 93,000 plus subscribers. That, that's amazing. Um, it just goes to show that, hey, that people are paying attention to the content. Um, they're liking it. They're loving it. And it's, it's more of a community uh, than anything else. I just don't call them subscribers. These are like friends. I got some relatives on here. Um, it, it, it's it's working. Um, and guys are 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 participating, they're sharing their information. And the thing I like about doing this all is that I'm an uncle. There's a reason why I call myself Uncle B because as an uncle, you get to say what you want to say. You know, it's like, um, hey, nephew, hey, niece, I, I know your mama. I know your, your father. I, I grew up with them. And so uh, I'm going to give it to you straight. No chaser. They love you. They care. I don't care. I'm going to tell you the straight up honest truth. Uh, you know, you can we can have that conversation whenever you want. Let's get it. And, you know, if you're wondering, you're here, you want to make sure that this is for you. Um, if you have any erection issues, we talk about the sexual performance scale where 10 is the highest, one is the lowest. Most guys I deal with are between a five and a seven. If you're below 10, if you're below nine, then it's time to start paying attention because, you know, as you get older, things change, your, uh, your, your lifestyle will change, and you don't want to get caught out there needing gas station pills or those pharmaceuticals. That's not a normal part of aging. And so what we're going to do today, let's go ahead and hop into it. We're going to talk about meat and your erections. That's very important to understand. We're going to talk about being addicted to dairy. Uh, I know that's a that's a crazy one. People have been doing that for years. I was addicted to it, too, just like everybody else. Um, and how and what to change about your eating style. And very important, very special to me is that we've brought on Chef Shio. <laughs> Shio. It is this guy's a go-to celebrity chef behind the uh, weight loss transformations for CC Sebastian, the, the New York Yankees pitcher, Tyler Perry, Janet Jackson, uh, Patrick Ewing, and several other baseball players, football players, basketball players. And I had an interview with him and we, you know, we just want to just introduce him because he's a part of our team now to help improve our lives by providing uh, the diet and everything that is necessary for for us to rock and roll so um let's go ahead and run that video sure. right quick oh hold up yeah let me let me just go ahead and hit that button please introduce yourself to uh the folks here how y'all doing i'm chef Cheo. great to be here today well what i'm trying to bring to the table is to to allow people to know that it's not hard and it's not a big problem to increase your testosterone you just need to know which ways about it to do it eating healthier getting your rest doing some exercise and meditation and resting and all that plays into part and i'm here to teach that and maybe show you little bits maybe teach you how to do the habits to increase your testosterone so oh. some people feel intimidated because they just don't know how there's no tutorial to do it so hopefully i'm here to give you some information and i can teach you how to do it well, I started uh, years ago. My first client was Patrick Ewan, mm. and he kind of taught me when he's ready, you have to be ready because guys at that level, mentally, they're there. Get together. Mm. To play at that highest level, your body be, has to be at the highest level to nutrition because it's totally so different sports nutrition and regular mm. nutrition because mm -hmm. guys that have to feed themselves to perform at the highest level eat totally different from us nine to five people. Yeah. I mean, that's important to understand. <laughs> there is a difference. There are levels to this. There's levels to this. And the reason why we brought him on is because he understands those levels and he's going to help us. In fact, uh, myself and two of my friends, we are actually looking to uh, just do all the things that are necessary. You know, all the things that I talk about, we're looking to pack that into 90 days and just see how high we can increase our testosterone levels. We've had our testosterone levels checked. We've actually done some blood work to pass on to the chef. He's actually going to take the blood work and come up with our diet plan. I mean, it's, this is going to be an amazing journey and we're going to be sharing it with you. So uh, please look out for that. That is something that's going to be coming soon. 
So let's go ahead and hop into it. I'm got I got a question though. Let's let's answer this question for me. How many animals do you eat a month? <laughs> let's be honest about that. How many animals do you eat a month? Um, you know, if you want to just go ahead and hop into uh the the chat um and the chat room and let's just talk about it. <laughs> How many animals do you eat? Um, I'm going to be honest. I used to eat 200 animals. That's 200. Easy to do. I know it's easy to do. I actually went through. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, just checking on the chat room. Uh, I've actually gone through the process of, of reducing the amount of animals that I eat. But, you know, just a, a normal American lifestyle. You know, you just go ahead and get a, a egg and egg and cheese. Bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit from McDonald's in the morning. You go get a chicken sandwich in the afternoon. You go get four wings and shrimp fried rice. That's uh, we up to like 10 animals right there in one day. And, you know, you got the endless wings. You got the golden corrals. You got the buffet. Type. I mean, we there's a lot of meat that we consume and we don't often think about it. So how many? Um, how many do you eat? Oh, there we go in the poll area. Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> so we have more than a hundred. I eat meat at least once a day, you know, and that's not something that's normal. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that. Um, just give you a quick um example of my food travel journey. First of all, I'm not a chicken hugger. Uh, I'm not one of those people like, oh, just save the cows and everything like that. Um, it, it's not. <laughs> it, it it's it. It's I'm not trying to just make you this. Uh, I'm just, just going to scare you into not ever eating animals again. I get it. I've gone through the whole process. It's been a part of my life. But once you realize the damage that it can do, once I realized the damage it did to me in terms of my need not working correctly, my uh, um, just having dangerous, having a whole bunch of problems, I decided to fix that. I went 80 percent vegan and 20 percent meat. I had that 20 percent in there just in case I needed to. Uh, you know, went around my mother's place or there was, you know, just nothing but meat available. I didn't want to stress out about it, but I've gone through that transition. Now I'm 80% whole plant, 20% vegan, a huge difference in my life. Um, and just the way I feel, I feel way younger. Um, I don't have any of the aches. I used to wake up every morning and have aches. I didn't want to touch the ground with my feet because my feet hurt. Uh, none of those issues anymore. If there's a fire, I can hop out of bed and run full speed. <laughs> it's a good feeling. So, um, like I was saying before, I love meat, <laughs> but meat doesn't love me. So the things that I, I saw the improvement in once I made changes in terms of intermittent fasting, in terms of getting rid of the meat, um, the arthritis in my right knee is gone. I have better skin, enhanced performance in the bedroom, uh, get back up faster, had carpal tunnel disease, which is painful, painful. It's caused by the thickening of the blood. And so once I stopped eating the meat, the carpal tunnel went away. Yeah. Yeah. Most people end up going to the hospital. I know some folks who've had it for years, just stopped eating the meat. It went away immediately. Um, all things like aches and pains and just waking up in the middle of the night, having to go to the bathroom for no reason, nothing coming up. That's called BPH. That went away. Less bloating, less snots. My fingernails grow faster. It's amazing the number of things that will change once you uh, get that out of your life. But, you know, like I said before, we've been lied to. The biggest lie in history, um, you know, before this guy showed up, Justin von Liebig, um, he's a German chemist from the 1850s. He said that muscular energy comes from animal protein and not from plants. Yeah, this is a guy that started it all. Now, why would he say something? Why would the idea of eating plant, eating meat, being healthy? Why would he say, it? oh, because he has a meat extraction company? <laughs> that's the reason why that is a uh, uh that that's that that's not helpful <laughs> that's not helpful to lie to the entire planet because part of what they did was they extracted the meat and so you know you you now just have a, a form of meat and now it was just cheaper to pass on and so that's the process that started people believing that you had to eat meat this is all recent our ancient ancestors didn't eat like this, but this guy, his company changed the way the entire planet eats. And he actually ins inspired the USDA's first protein re recommendation. Of course, it's the USDA. They got paid off by the farm farm lobby and they just kept, you know, coming with the meat, even though it's been proven that his theories are absolutely wrong. 
that's not the way humans work. That's not the way we're supposed to work. And uh, I do want to give a shout out to our guys who uh, showed up in the chat room, Brad and Joe. Hey, I uh, appreciate that, Joe. We got some more polls coming. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, we are going to get you taken care of. So here's another question for you. Do you know where protein comes from? If you go ahead and put that into the uh, into the chat section, where does protein come from? What do you think? Um, you know, a lot of people don't ask that question like, uh, oh, this is this. this you know, we all know where it comes from. Uh, it comes from animals, right? Uh, let's check that out. Nah. <laughs> no, uh, that is not where all protein comes from. Because if, you, if you're if you wondering that, then, um, well, protein, yeah, yeah, most guys on it. Brad, Eddie, got it right, Joe? Ah, let me show you something. <laughs> protein comes from plants. Uh, that's where the cows get it from. That's where animals, all animals get their protein from. Uh, plants. The only ones that get their protein from um, from other animals are carnivores, carnivores and omnivores. And we often say that humans are carnivores and omnivores. That's obviously not true. Carnivores and omnivores eat meat alive. That's the reason why you can play dead around a bear is <laughs> because a um, they they're sniffing you. They're like, I didn't kill you. So how long have you been dead? And if I eat something that is already dead, it becomes putrid. It will kill me. So they instinctively know not to do that. Um, and, and people often say that, you know, um, animal flesh has more a complete protein. That is a complete lie. Uh, plants have all the essential amino acids in varying proportions. So you can get everything you need from plants. Uh, hey, these are, uh, protein comes from plants, animals. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. We want to go straight to the source and, you know, I'm glad to have some, some folks in here who, who, who get this, who know this information and it's very important. Um, so when we're talking about meat, uh, obviously, you know, if you've seen Game Changers, they talked about this. You eat meat, eating meat clouds your blood. It clouds the blood plasma. It stays in your body for six to seven hours. And yes, it does affect your erections. Um, I talk to guys often. They're like, oh, yeah, everything was fine. You know, I was all ready to go. She's ready to go. I'm ready to get it. And then nothing happened. I couldn't get an erection. It's like, well, what did you eat? And they'll say, oh, I didn't eat anything. You know, I was trying to keep my, my system empty so I could have this. What did you eat last? Oh, I had salmon. Well, it stayed in your body and it's affecting you. So, you know, when you're younger, think our testosterone masks a lot of issues so we can eat whatever, drink whatever. But as you get older, that is going to change. You, you've been collecting that meat in your body for all those years. So, you know, it affects your blood flow. Um, and. You know, it's important to understand that, you know, you got these foods that can fight inflammation. Uh, they're all plant based. Um, plants reduce inflammation uh, 64 times more and has 64 times 64 times more antioxidants than animal foods. So, you know, there is a good reason to reduce <laughs> eating um animal foods. I mean, it's causing all these inflammations. The inflammation is blocking the blood flow. Um, you need that for your uh, erections. You need that for your heart. You, you need that to uh, live better. And even when we're talking about cow's milk uh, can increase estrogen by 26 percent and decrease testosterone by 18 percent in one hour. That's insane. You know, they're saying milk does a body good. Mm, that That's more of a commercial. <laughs> it's not it's not the truth. Um, and, you know, when you're on it, you know, people often ask how long is it going to take before you see results when you're on a plant based uh, diet um, in terms of erections uh, erection time in minutes increases by 300 percent. so you have while you're asleep you have uh about four to five erections just naturally and this increases the erection time which is great because you're getting that blood flow in and not only uh that but it's increasing the hardness of your erection so if you're con continuing to do this over time it's just going to continue to improve um and you can reduce your inflammation in 20 by 29 percent in three weeks that's just freaking amazing. It's amazing what your body can do when you give it the right stuff. So um, this is this is important to pay attention why you need to change. Meat does not break down correctly in your body. It stays in your body, clogs up everything. And, and like I said before, um, this meat eating experiment we've been doing for the past 150 years has been proven not to work. 
Um, the children growing up now have the, for the first time in human history, won't be living as long as the parents. So there's something uh, going on. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Just checking out the chat section there. So what it is to change, um, there's this also this thought process that we can switch between animals <laughs> that, you know, it's like chicken is better than beef. No, it's not. No, not. when it comes to your body, you're putting death inside your body. You're putting, you know, an animal that's no longer alive inside of your body. It's going to have the exact same effect. It doesn't matter if it's fish, uh, if it's a sparrow, if it's a giraffe, it's all the same. Um, the healthiest diet is plant based uh, with no processed product. That's that's just a truth. Um, so but at the same time, you know, like I said, I went 80 percent uh, vegan, 20 percent meat eating because I didn't want to stress about it. You know, it takes a while. This is a psychological game that you have to play. And so let's talk about really quick the difference with differences between a vegetarian, a vegan and um, whole plant based uh, because people often get that confused. They conflate it. Um, uh, vegetarians, no meat, but do eat dairy. And, uh, as we mentioned before, dairy is not great for you at all. We'll get into that deeper, just a bit. Vegan is no meat or dairy, but processed plants. Um, there are a huge number of processed, uh, products that are coming out on the market. They do have their flaws. They're not as good as a whole plant-based diet was just the plant as close to the source as possible, but it is much better than eating meat. So, you know, it's great for a transition um, to have those those processed plants. You can still have your hamburgers. Uh, but when it comes to red meat, and this is something we see all the time when we go to the grocery stores, why is the, re the meat red? How, how do we get to red meat? That doesn't even make sense. 70% of the meat sold in stores is treated with carbon monoxide. Yeah, that thing that can kill you. <laughs> They're treated with carbon monoxide so it can keep the bacteria from spreading and turning the color because this is what it looks like. Uh, as you can imagine, if you've seen anything that's dead on a roadkill, it's stiff. The blood has stopped moving. That's how you know it's dead. <laughs> so uh, that's the reason why they have to treat it with carbon monoxide. So it's another reason not to eat meat. I mean, it's sort of a scary thought process. Um, and like I mentioned before, when it comes to eating certain foods, um, especially the newer, these are all you got the rice dream. You have all these different products that are coming out that are plant based. You definitely have to pay attention to your body because, for example, there's some products that I've tried out that didn't work well for me. They didn't sit well in my stomach. So you have to be uh, aware of that. And also, you don't want to go crazy and think like, oh, OK, it's, it's vegan ice cream. I can eat as much vegan ice cream as I want to. No, nah, no, nah, nah. especially if you're dealing with you know health issues. It's still a product is still processed. So, you know, there's still sugar that's involved in that. There's, you know, there's still uh, other things that you have to be aware of because, you know, it's, if you're trying to help with your weight, you're still dealing with volume. If you're just eating a bunch, even if it is vegan, mm, it's still some issues to pay out to. So I got another question for you and please hit us up uh, and with the polls on this one. And that is, are you addicted to cheese? I know I, I have been when I was a kid. Oh, of course. Of course. I remember actually going to get the, the, the cheese slices and just open it up that cheese slice and just eating it raw. Um, you know, uh, uh, it's cheese. <laughs> I mean, who, when you were a kid, who didn't love just getting cheese? It was, it was something that you just did. And I see, and I, we, we're about 50, 50. We got some people. Like, yes, I love cheese. And nope, I don't che eat cheese often. And I understand that. I understand that. And there's some things to understand about cheese, cheese as an industry. Cheese consumption has gone up from four pounds in 1909 to 33 pounds in 2013. That's insane. <laughs> 29 pounds of cheese increase. That's insane. But it's because our government worked with the dairy farmer lobbies to get more cheese into the fast food chains. That's the reason why you get your cheddar lovers, bacon burger and a chicken cordon bleu. And I picture right here, the ultimate cheese pizza. That is a, that's, that's part of your 29 pounds right there of cheese. And you have to realize how cheese is made. Cheese obviously comes from cow's milk, but they add in bacteria to cause fermentation. And they also add rennet. Now, I don't mean to discuss you, but rennet is actually the lining of the fourth stomach of the cow, of the calf. 
I'm not sure how someone came up with the thought process of how to make cheese and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and kill the calf and take the the lining of its stomach. That's just crazy and disgusting. <laughs> but that's the process. I mean, now they have uh different products. They have, you know, you know, they've they synthesized the rennet, but that's how it all came about. Uh, <laughs> hey, Eddie, just parmesan with pasta. I got you. I got you. Joe, are you eating cheese right now? Joe, I'm eating cheese pizza right now. <laughs> Oh, my man, I understand. Let, let's keep on talking about it. I hope we can change your mind just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, oh, yes, Lisa. Lisa asks, I'm wondering if cutting out or reducing meat will help improve women's sex drive. Uh, yes. Yes, it will. Um, there are a bunch of hormones that are involved in, you know, just eating animals, period. And it's also it impairs your blood flow also. So, you know, as a woman, you still have blood flow that needs to go down to uh, your vagina. It also deals with issues in terms of lubrication. So your body's just not going to function correctly uh, if you're, you know, you're eating meat. Uh, that's that's just the truth. Um, so let's keep on going with the cheese, though. Uh, cheese is 70% fat. Yeah. Yeah, it turns into fat as soon as it goes into your body. There is no fiber in it, so you're actually going to stay hungry. It slows down your metabolism. There isn't a lot of great stuff about cheese, unfortunately. I see you, Joe. You say yes. <laughs> uh, um, so when we're talking about cheese, um, they add uh, cheese sodium. There's a lot of sodium because to get rid of the bacteria they need to put into the the cheese to make it firm they have to kill the bacteria out of it and they do that by adding a ridiculous amount of cheese uh, one serving of cheddar cheese has 350 mi milligrams of sodium where you know in comparison a cup of rice has um much less <laughs> much much less yeah yeah joe thanks you for that question um these uh, appreciate that uh, <laughs> Joe says, "Oh, better make my wife vegetarian." Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I, I go for the whole family, actually. Yeah, uh, make them all healthy. So when we call, talk about that cheese addiction, this is the way cheese addiction works. Um, cheese has a perfect combination of fat, salt, and an addictive chemical. That addictive chemical is casomorphine. Casomorphine is like uh, morphine. It's like heroin. So it's a painkiller. So we have receptors in our brain to take in uh, those those chemicals. And casomorphine is created by um, by mammals, by mother's milk in order to have the child come back. It's like, hey, yeah, don't get think that, oh, I just drank the milk once and I'm going to wander off and start eating something else. It's nature's way of bringing the baby back, recognizing, oh, I need to come back to this milk. The idea, though, is that you're going to get winged off of it. And we as humans just decided, no, nah, 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 we're not going to get winged off it. We're going to stay on this for as long as possible. And so when you're addicted to cheese, you're actually addicted to that milk. You're addicted to that casomorphine chemical. So it does take some time to get off of it. Uh, but once you realize that, yeah, not only um, it's causing you big problems, but also it's going, there, there are alternatives now. Um so you can look at for those alternatives. That's the way to get off. And let's talk about milk right quick. Um, so milk is relatively new for humans. Um, it's only been around, started in Europe about 7,500 years ago. And since humans have been around for 200,000 years, that's only 4%. So, you know, the idea that people say that, you know, you have to have milk, milk builds strong bones and things like that. Nah, that's not true. And in fact, a great portion of the planet of humans are lactose intolerant. And I'm one of them. <laughs> I mean, I, I used to eat that cheese and then mm, mm, now cheese does not agree with me at all. And it causes different issues, including weight gain, uh, cancer risk, fracture risk. And, and that's the one that's always puzzling to people. It's like, oh, isn't it supposed to make your bones stronger? Mm, no, no, no. Uh, milk actually, the calcium in milk actually leaches uh, calcium from your bones. Uh, so it's not good. And also, one of the reasons why people love drinking milk is because it got a lot of sugar in it. 13 grams of sugar. That, that's a lot, uh, considering that the World Health Organization has uh, well, they've downgraded their number to uh, six grams of sugar a day. Uh, but we've been going at a good 22 grams of sugar. So, you know, that's over half of, you know, what you need. 
And um, it also is not a great thing to have with cereal. It does two things. One, uh, most cereals have a lot of sugar in it also. So you're adding sugar to sugar first thing in the morning when your testosterone is building. If you, as soon as you eat, your testosterone is like, oh, okay, we're good. <laughs> Without that, you know, if you're not eating in the morning, your testosterone continues to build until you have something to eat. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Lisa says, uh, I've heard that milk actually leaches calcium from our bones. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and here's something else about uh, dairy that you need to know. And I think this one, this one, we need to yell to the rooftops. Please share this with your family. Um, it, it's important to understand that, one, if you want to have babies, cheese lowers your sperm count. Um, cheese is not great for diabetes at all. And most importantly, for a lot of my fellas out there, prostate cancer, if you have prostate cancer concerns, Harvard has come out and said that the strongest and most consistent dietary factor linked with prostate cancer was high consumption of milk or dairy products. Now, that's scary. That's scary. And also um, for Lisa and, and, and Joe and everyone else who has a, 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 the ladies in your life, it is highly linked to breast cancer. Yeah, I, I know that's confusing because you have Suman, Susan G. Orman for the cure. And that cure is being sponsored by the milk industry. So they're more interested in like, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, here you go. Uh, breast cancer and milk at the same time. Um, you know, if, if you if you knew that, if you knew that, go ahead. And let me know in, in, the, um, in the comment sections, because uh, this has been proven. I'm not making this up. There's scientific studies out there, but a lot of people just don't know that that's what's happened. Um, and also one of the other things with milk um, is linked to Alzheimer's disease. Um and it also lowers testosterone immediately. I mentioned that before. It lowers testosterone in an hour. They did a study on young boys. And so we're running around saying that, you know, these boys are, they seem a little bit more effeminate. Something's going on. What's going on? Drink your milk. And they're like, no, no, stop. <laughs> stop with the drinking of the milk. Also, um, as I mentioned before, cow's milk doesn't equal healthy bones. There isn't a study. That, that's just a commercial. They just literally made that up in a commercial. There's no study that's ever said that. So, uh, and also, you know, they say hormone free milk, that's impossible. I mean, that, that's what milk is. It's, it's supposed to give the, the child hormones. So what is that water? <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Ian, Ian McTavish, man, that's, I, I hope I'm saying that right. Is that lane? Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, but blue cheeses, what, are, what about blue cheeses? Are they more natural? No, no, they're still coming from a cow. It's just how it's uh, flavored. So, you know, it may have more salt. It may have a different flavoring to it, but it's still the same basic cow's milk, bacteria, rennet. And then after that, it's, it's, uh, it's flavoring. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, Kurt, welcome. Uh, sorry you're, you're a little bit late, but, you know, we'll make sure we get you there. Okay. Great, great. All right, so let's keep on going. Um, I was just checking out the chat room. Um, so yeah, let's go back to our chef here. So uh, our chef, he deals with superstar athletes all the time, and he's looking at how they. I asked the question of him: How do they approach their eating lifestyle compared to the average athletes? And I think that's important for us to understand because a lot of times we don't, we just go for it. So what does the chef have to say? Let's start. What have you learned from more, some of your more uh, successful athletes as compared to, you know, when you say like a superstar as compared to a, a star, compared to a, a B-lister, I guess you would say, uh, someone who just rises up. What, is there a different mentality? Is there a different way they look at eating? Oh, it's a totally different mentality. They're mentally, they're there. Physically, they, they're, they're there. Uh, Body-wise and their talent catches up to everything. So they play they know what they need to do to get to that next level. It's like Kobe said, God, may God, you know, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. But he took it to the next level because he learned from the generation before, like Michael Jordan, Patrick Ewing, Charles Barkley, all those guys. When it came to food and putting nutrients in, them, in themselves, they knew this is what it's going to take to get me to the next step. That's why they were always above everybody else, Michael Jordan especially. His food plan and his diet and his lifestyle and his working out and his whole total system 
was above and beyond anybody else. So that's why he was always on top of his game. And that comes to any, any sport, any guy that just takes that extra 10 to 15% effort will always return on the back end because most guys are not doing it above and beyond what they need to do. When I meet an athlete, I always tell them, what is your expectation of this? What do you want out of this game or out of this profession? Because at the end of the day, it is a profession. Right. It's not just a game. They are professionals at what they do, but it's a different levels of professionalism, what you have to bring to the table to be the top 5% athlete of the sport. Mm-hmm. And luckily, I've been blessed to be around guys that were that top 5%. And mentally, I learned from them that what it takes to get to that next step and what they need to get to that next step. So some guys would tell me, hey, can you do this for me? And one thing I always learned from myself is that I can't say, I never, I can never say I can't. Let's see, or let's try to get to where you need to get to. Because my job is to make them 10 to 15% more efficient. So if I make a player 15 to, 10 to 15% more efficient, that's, that just amounts to dollar signs. It amounts to they're creating the space for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was uh, so insightful. I mean, this guy... And just to to make sure everyone, um, if you came on a little bit late, uh, this chef, he's joined us uh, as a team. He's going to help prepare a diet plan for myself and, and some friends of ours um, so that we can uh, go through the process and just see what happens in terms of our testosterone levels. So, you know, uh, definitely look out for that. We'll be sending out information. We're actually going to set up a Facebook uh, group and we're inviting uh, folks to come on in. And you know, take a look and see what's going on with our lives as we change our diet plans. So um, please look out for that. And so let's talk about what you can't eat. <laughs> I've been going through what you can't eat. But, um, you know, when it comes to the whole plant based diet, it's just that there's no meat, there's no processed foods, just fruits and vegetables, nuts and beans. It's not vegan. As I mentioned before, this is just plant based, uh, you know, uh, vegan means having that processed in there. And of course, the vegetarian, that's the eggs and dairy. But the thing that I think is most important uh, is that we stop eating death. Um, like I mentioned before, that's what we're doing. You, it, in order for us to eat an animal, we have to kill it, cook it, do other things to it. And that death, once it gets into your body, that decay is there. It's going to do what it wants to do. It doesn't care about how you uh, uh um what your affiliation is or what you do death is death is death <laughs> it's it's number one in decay <laughs> and that's what it's going to do so you don't want things decaying inside of your body and and that's what we're doing so when it comes to all the different issues that's what's showing up uh eating death contaminates your body because the waste cannot leave efficiently so it stays inside of your body it's clogging your arteries it's causing a bunch of issues there is no Real reason. There's no physical reason to eat meat. Um, and I'll point this out. I just want to diverge just a, a quick second, just so it's a thought process. In terms of all the excavations you ever heard, you know, for like ancient bones and burial sites and things like that, civilizations that may have gotten wiped out and their bones are just right there. You never hear of like the animals sitting right there next to them in terms of like, well, you know, if they ate like we, there should be like a, a huge mountain of, of chicken bones buried somewhere, some cow bones. I don't know, rhinoceros, buffalo, something. <laughs> I mean, there is no doubt that, yes, there was some eating of animals that's it's in the Bible <laughs> that has happened throughout our history, but it's never been to the level it is right now. It was always a sacrifice, a special occasion. Um, even if you go back less than 150 Years you go back, you know, to your grandmother, your grandfather, their generation when they were young growing up. If they had two pieces of meat a month, that was a great month. The vast majority of people couldn't afford to kill animals constantly, there wasn't factory farming. So, that's something just to keep in mind of what's going on. Um, Kirk, yes, yes. Uh, I'll make sure we'll make sure we get all the information up on how to uh, sign up for that and how we can get that diet plan like uh, Joe is asking about. So, yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to get you taken care of. Um, so when we talk about men on the whole plants, this is something uh, another thought process for you, that, which is men give life. Uh, women give birth. 
So, you know, that whole we give. You know, so we're a giver of sperm and that sperm has to be on point the first time it comes out. So, uh, you know, they often say, uh, hey, man, you know, it can have a baby, you know, up to 70. It's like, yeah, but what's the quality of the sperm? Uh, what's the quality of your health? So we only have that one shot in order to uh, in order to produce a healthy baby. And as far as, you know, just just thinking about our lives, period, how we're different from women, women can be completely out of shape and have sex. Yeah. Yeah. They're called BBWs. And for men, you can't be completely out of shape and have sex. You're going to have erection issues. So we have two different tacks in life. And for men, in order to give life, you can't be going towards death. You you need to be healthy. So that's one of the reasons why the, your, your erections is the first thing to go when you're not being healthy. And the other thing to think about, and this is hard for a lot of people, but if you're eating death, you're going to die painfully. Um, it, it's. <laughs> oh, sorry. The, the, the comment section, you guys are funny. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, when it comes to death, um, you, you know, no one says I want to have cancer, diabetes, hypertension, erectile dysfunction, or lupus. Uh, actually, you're not going to die from erectile dysfunction. You're not going to have pain from that, but it's pain in another way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, when you're eating death, you're, you're just piling on the possibility of catching all of these diseases. That's just the way it works. There is no, no opposite to this. Um, eating energy, however, can cure all a lot of these diseases to all of these diseases. And I do want to make sure it is understood. There are some diseases that we've been told um, that can't be cured that can. So type two diabetes, tons of people have been told that they can't be cured. In fact, if you go back and you look in the comment section on, um, on my YouTube channel, uh, Brian Ayers, just search for that on YouTube. You'll see that the, we have guys in there who will consistently say, oh, yeah, my doctor said I couldn't get off of type 2 diabetes. I changed my diet and now I don't have it. That word is not out there enough. Please share this um, with friends and family because it's important. We don't need to go through the pain of having diabetes for no reason. And just to go back uh, to Chef one more time. Everyone asks this question. So how long I'm going to do this? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to change my diet. I'm going, how long does it take to see changes in your life? That's an important question. And, you know, he gives us that answer. I like when you say you don't like to use the word diet. Uh, but when they're making this lifestyle change, it's always that time. So let's go ahead and ask that question. How long does it take to see improvements when you're making changes to your eating style? Some, some people, you can see it right away. You can see it within a couple of days. And some, some persons might take a little longer. It just depends on how your blood system is, your blood flow, um, and what exactly do you need. Um, if you stay with it, let's say the first, I've always seen results within the first three days. You wow. see that people start changing. First is the skin, your skin starts to clear up, you look mm -hmm. better, you feel better, you might be sleeping a little better, a little longer, more restful sleep. Um, maybe four or five days later, you start to see they have more energy. Your energy level starts to go up. Yeah. Yeah. And that is so amazingly uh, true. Um, I've experienced that myself. Uh, and like I said earlier, it is an amazing feeling because I think what we as as humans, we tend to do is like we get, I'm going to say comfortable, but we get used to. So it's like uh, you're walking around. It's like, oh, my knee hurts. Oh, my knee hurts. Oh, my knee hurts. I guess it's supposed to hurt. And, you know, I for a long time, uh, I would say almost like two to three years, I had knee problems and I couldn't even stand up. I, I was at work. I would have to stand up and stretch. And the stretching wasn't making a difference because as soon as I sat down, the inflammation kicked in. And, you know, I just kept feeding that inflammation with the meat. As soon as I made changes to my lifestyle, that went away. And I, I want that for everyone because it is important. Um, and let's talk about those results. So, one thing about a whole plant based diet is that you can eat a lot of plants <laughs> and be good because you're eating energy. Your body knows exactly what to do with it. Isn't it? It knows where that fiber is supposed to go, what's supposed to happen with the different minerals in there. Uh, some people get hung up on like, what is the best plant? What's the best fruit? What's the best vegetable? All of them, as I mentioned before, have the amino acids um, in varying amounts. So it really there is no perfect one. Because it's going to do a lot of different things for your body. I mean, think about it. You eat an apple and it turns into you. I mean, that's your fingernail. 
that that's an amazing uh thing that your body can do and so it's necessary uh it's necessary to to eat the plants you don't have to worry about which plants just eat them and make sure you get a variety in there you know they talk about the different colors and things like that but it's just way better than eating the the death um and to go into you know what those results can be um like i mentioned before in three weeks your inflammation goes down by 28 percent. that that's a lot that that is a lot and if you keep on going uh it's going to get even better um you can reverse a lot of circulatory diseases. Like I said, I got rid of my arthritis. I got rid of my carpal tunnel disease. Uh, I got rid of the the BPH, which is that um, illness, disease, if you will, where you have to wake up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom and nothing comes out, you know, in terms of you know, urination. You're just waking up and being irritated all the time. Um, and as I mentioned before, guys in the comment sections constantly are talking about, I made this change. I made that change. And, you know, within a week I could see the difference. So it's real. It's real. Like I said before, we were lied to, <laughs> we're sitting there thinking we're doing one thing uh, correctly and it's not, but here's an amazing transformation, uh, that happened, uh, with Tracy here. She was in a documentary, Unsupersize Me. Everybody remember that movie, Supersize Me. This was Unsupersize Me. And she worked out for an hour a day. And just ate whole plants, had a whole plant diet, lost 100 pounds um, in 100 days and then went on to lose 200 pounds in 12 months. I mean, that's amazing. That is amazing. So it shows what it can do. She was just eating energy. And so it made her workouts easier. And I think that's an, an important thing to point out for people who like to work out. If you're working out while eating meat, you increase your the, the chances that you're going to have an injury because you're constantly putting in inflammation into your body and then you're moving it. I know because that has happened to me consistently, uh, my shoulder will hurt. It'll just get locked up. So, uh, and then I will have to stop working out. So if you're enjoying working out, you want to work out more. Uh, yeah. Cutting back on the meat is going to make it easier. I know they tell you the opposite. Eh, yeah, it's not true. <laughs> it's just not true. Um, and so let's talk about some of the things that you can do. And this is one of the more important ones, which is remember the pain. Um, for me, whenever now I just gotten to the point, whenever I'm looking at certain foods, um, it doesn't do anything for me. I mean, back in the day, if you should fried chicken, of course, <laughs> if there was a fried chicken right there. It's like, oh, oh, of course, I'm going to have that. But now I remember that, yeah, if I eat the fried chicken, I won't be able to walk. Um, and it, I can feel it almost instantly now because my body has become attuned to it. So, uh, if I'm having, you know, if, if I have a piece of salmon, I know exactly what it's going to do to me. If I have uh, any part of a pig, my feet start hurting. Um, you know, I've just gotten used to that. And so I remember that pain. So I'm not going to go back to that. Uh, also don't kill yourself over this. You have to always say this, walk away from crazy. We've been taught a crazy lifestyle. And it's not working. So now we have to start switching over. And that takes time. It took me three years to go from eating 200 animals a month to where I am now. Um, and so it's, I highly encourage you to go that direction. But you need help. And part of that is what you're doing right now, <laughs> which is getting more information. But also there are documentaries out there. What the health forks over knives, game changers. Go on to YouTube, Netflix, and um, uh, maybe one is on Hulu, one or two are on Hulu. Check those out because there are more documentaries that are coming out. Like I mentioned earlier, Unsupersize Me, that was out. They make a difference in terms of uh, uh, the way you think. You're going to get more perspectives. And inevitably, what happens is, is that you get one piece of information that touches you in a way that you know it wouldn't do for anyone else. Uh, for me, once I realized that I was eating death, it was like, oh, 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 I'm, I'm done. Uh, for other people, it doesn't hit them that way. It's like, eh, whatever, it's me. <laughs> but they hear something else. It's like, oh, oh, no, no, no. I don't want that to have to happen to me. Um, for example, um, I know a guy who realized, you know, he was thinking that, oh, cancer just happens in my family. I, I'm just going to have it. Uh, some other people, it's like heart attack and stroke. That No, no. Here's a, a, a fun fact. 70% <laughs> of your DNA is influenced by nutrition. Yeah. So 30% is locked in, maybe your height, your eye color, your skin color. The rest of that is dictated by what you eat. So, you know, what you eat is very important. So you need to look at ways you can change that. And what you can also do is, you know, 
you're going to have to hunt down some of these restaurants. Uh, fortunately, more restaurants are coming out. We have uh, a, a new restaurant near me called New Vegan. Many restaurants are changing their um, their formats so they can have more vegan options. Uh, Qdoba does uh, 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 Dunkin' Donuts shockingly <laughs> has it, uh, which was actually sort of strange. It was like, yeah, we're going to uh, give you a plant based sausage along with the egg and cheese. Uh, OK, <laughs> um, but, you know, at least they're going in the right direction. Um, there are other uh, products that are coming out on um, Beyond Meat, um, Impossible uh, Possible Burgers. Uh, I mean, there is the fastest growing food market segment. Uh, because more people are asking for it. So it's grown like 21, uh, 31% over the past two years. And there are many different products. Um, they're using pea, mint, mung bean, fava beans, brown rice. They're using more plants, which is a great thing. Um, I, I haven't talked about what this effect has on our planet, which is a huge effect on our planet. But going, uh, going plant-based is helping not only you, but also helping the planet. Um, also, there are so many other products that are coming out. Uh, when it comes to milk, you have almond milk, rice milk, cashew, oatmeal, hemp, different product brands, Beyond Beef, uh, Garden Burger. Um, Chipotle's has Safritas. They've had that out for a while. And Just Egg, that is great. I've actually had that this morning. <laughs> um, it, it's it's You couldn't tell. I've served it up to my nephew, who is a food critic by nature. And he couldn't tell. He didn't know until I told him. Then he was like, oh, it didn't matter to him. He just liked the taste of it. Um, and also, um, just remember that you don't have to drink milk. Um, you know, a lot of people think, oh, no, you have to have it for your bones, etc. You get the calcium, protein and B12 from leafy vegetables. You don't have to drink the milk. You get the vitamin, vitamin D from the sun. They often talk about eating the sun. And that's what we're doing. All these plants have seen the sun. <laughs> that's what you want. You want to get your energy from the sun. And also all these other products that are coming out. You got plant-based butters. You got the ice cream. Um, there, there's so many different things that are coming out. And just for those folks who have that question in their mind, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joe Chipotle, <laughs> Chipotle, Sofritas, check those out. Uh, Kirk asked a good question. What about the soy alternatives? I thought they weren't healthy. Soy is a tricky one. Uh, the soy plant in and of itself is natural. That's fine. But soy is the second most processed plant in this country. So there's corn and then there's soy. And so when you're doing all this level of processing to grow the, so the soy more, they're adding in GMOs. They're adding in, um, you know, different issues. It also, you talk about the phytoestrogens that are in there. There are people who are, you know, phytoestrogens mimic estrogens. They're, they're not exactly estrogens. Um, so the, that that science is still in debate. I would say this though. If I had the choice between eating um, animal-based meal or soy, I'd go with the soy. If I had a choice between soy and something else, <laughs> I would go with something else. That's We're just sort of in that space right now until uh, you know, hopefully they'll get that figured up or we just have way more choices. And fortunately, we're having way more choices now. Um, so hopefully that answered your question, Kurt. Um, and there's just one thing I want to say. Uh, we hear this all the time. There's that question of is uh, grass fed milk or grass fed meat better than feedlot milk or feedlot meat? That's like asking if cocaine is better than crack. They're both bad. <laughs> there isn't somehow uh, just because, and it, it's a weird thought process too that we're saying that because the animal is now free to walk around, that that's somehow better because they have to go through the exact same process of being processed. So, yeah, the carbon monoxide that has to happen, uh, the whole killing process, the whole preservation process, you know, packaging in plastic, having it travel on. If you're living on the East Coast. Uh, most of your meat is coming from North Carolina. So I live right next to a grocery store filled with meat and chicken, every, all this other kind of stuff, like every other grocery store. It's coming from North Carolina. So that is not you know, how is that happening? Something died weeks ago, a uh, few days ago and traveled for miles and ended up in your store. Yeah, that's that's not going to be happy. That's, uh 
Ian asks, uh, what options are there instead of butter? Um, yeah, avocado oil, plant-based butter. Um, check out in this, just uh, go to more, some of the more progressive stores. I would say I haven't been to every grocery store, but many stores now have uh, the plant-based alternative. Why? Because people are asking for it and there's money involved. And so uh, you can you can check that out. And uh, actually, I had the avocado oil today. Um, avocado oil, uh, butter today with my, uh, just eggs. And it was, you can't tell the difference. I mean, and and think about this. Another thing to think about in terms of animals, um, they don't, (laughs) I love butter on my vegetables. I get you just switch up to butter, switch up to butter and you you will be doing better. Um, but you know, when it comes to think about this, when you're eating an animal or you're eating, uh, you're drinking milk or taking in dairy, it doesn't taste like anything like what the animal is. I mean, think about that. It's like you can't eat the animal. So the animal, you have to kill the animal. And then if you just took, you know, uh, chicken with no flavoring and you cooked it up and you served it, people would be like, eh, eh, what's wrong with this? It just has no flavor on it. Well, the flavor is coming from plants. So, you know, the process of making, you know, what the process foods are doing, they're substituting. So they're taking plants and making them taste like what we became accustomed to, unfortunately. So you can use these plants now to like uh, sort of reverse engineer. So, you know, uh, I've used Beyond Beef to make burgers for my nephew. He can't tell the difference. Uh, My chili is, yeah, (laughs) I have vegetarian chili. People can't tell at all. Um. So, you know, it's the seasoning. So my biggest weapon in the in the um, in the kitchen is I got a huge spice rack, it's like 48 different spices. And, you know, I'm not a chef. I'm not a cook, but I'm learning, you know, what tastes better. So it's important to to have that uh, going on. All right. So let's rock and roll. Um, I do have another question, though. And this is important. Have you had your testosterone check? This is not a part of a normal part of uh, a doctor's visit. And it should be. Uh, It's important that you have, um, it's important that you you get your testosterone check because if you don't have your testosterone check, you don't know where you are. You may think everything's fine and your testosterone can can change up on you. Um, All right, let's see this. We have some folks on there who, yes, they're working on their their levels and we also have some folks who say no okay ah fortunately we have uh uh more folks right now in our poll who's saying that they have uh improved their levels if you haven't go to the polls right quick and just go ahead and let us know um because it is important that you know exactly where you are man i got a i got a good crowd here <laughs> educated crowd we got 75 percent of folks who are saying that they improved their levels and yeah, yeah, you should definitely get checked. And fortunately, uh, we have partnered up with a company called Let's Get Checked.com. They're a home testosterone testing kit uh, company. And so basically what you do, you go ahead and order it online. It comes to your house. It has the needle. It has the the um, the vial. And you just go ahead, prick your finger and put your blood in there and you can send it back the same day. Um, this is a highly regarded company. They work with CVS and Walmart. They're, you know, stocked with doctors and, uh, and great things like that. The cool thing about them is that they've made it extremely easy for this to happen. Uh, like I said before, you get it at home, you go ahead and you prick your finger, you get the, the blood out, you send it on back to them and they will actually not only email you, but they will call you and answer any questions you may have which is really great. I mean, if you think about in terms of going to your doctor, you have to go there, you have to wait, you have to get your blood drawn, you have to go through all this paperwork, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all this. Uh, Maybe tired just thinking about it. But um, this way, this way it is much easier and it is confidential and they do have, uh, and I tested this myself. I called like in the middle of the night for no reason. Um, they do have the physicians and nurses there 24 uh, seven. And so, and also the uh, one important thing, they do have online videos and an online portal. So you can actually go in and see how to do the test. And also they have a portal where they ask uh, some questions about you 
in terms of you know, your height, your weight, just questions that are that are helpful in terms of being able to get back to you and give you good information. So, um, you know, it, it's important that you uh, that you get that check. And Brad asked, do they check both free and total testosterone? Yes. Um, they have three different levels. One is just a base level of testosterone. They have another one that goes even deeper and one that goes even deeper. It just depends on, uh, you know, it, there's cost involved with the, the more thorough. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's important that you, you get that done. So you have, uh, that information. Um, uh, and I did want to say that, uh, one thing I can testify myself that's great about this is that I took it, uh, the test back in uh August of last year and it, it, it was well let me just show you <laughs> I was at 398 uh nanogram uh nanograms per deciliter um and that was back in August and then in January I went up to 502. So that's a 104 point swing you know and that was lifestyle changes that I was making. I went from a a uh, situation that was a little bit stressed to a much less stressed situation. Um, I started paying more attention to uh, what I was eating, um, the the intermittent fasting. I got more on a regular program with that, and I saw the results. And so that's the reason why myself and my friends were going through this process to see if we can push it up even higher. You know, I'm looking to go to 800. Uh, 800. The range is uh, 280, roughly 280 to 820. Uh, that's the, you know, the normal range. If you're, you know, I'm, I'm now sitting in the middle, I was sitting on the lower end of that. So I want to get to the point to be as, as healthy as possible. So, you know, and you can go up to a thousand, you know, we're now dealing in an age where our testosterone levels are the lowest in human, uh, history. And in fact, that is problematic for our, uh, children, our sons that are coming up and for the girls. Uh, a lot of people don't think about it this way, but you see the young women who are going, they're, they're 13, look like they're going on 23. Um, and it's been happening for a while. It's just the age just been getting younger and younger and younger. It's because they're getting more of the estrogen from the chicken, the more estrogen from the plastic, more estrogen from just everything that's around us. And the issue becomes if you're going to develop that much early, then it's going to, the issues that some women have later on in life, they're going to develop those issues earlier also. Um, so it's something worth not only paying attention to, but taking action on. And everything that we're saying here, you know, though we're talking about erections and health and things, sexual health, this just applies to your health period. Um, men, we just happen to have a measuring stick for our level of health. So, and it's, it's right there in front of us. So if something is going wrong. That's the first thing that gets affected. So we just, we can see this up front, but in terms of what happens with your body overall in order to get your erections back, your health has to be back. You know, people often say that, you know, uh, I have an erection issue. No, you have a health issue. Um, your, your erection is just the first thing to uh, indicate that. So just to let you guys know, this is part of a webinar series. Uh, we've gone on for about an hour. I want to appreciate, uh, just want to say, I appreciate everyone who's uh, stayed with us so far. Um, and we have more webinars to go. We've did the testosterone growth game plan that is now up on YouTube. Um, so please go check that out. Um, this webinar, um, you know, uh, we'll have up in a, probably a, a week or two. Uh, so you can go ahead and do a replay, check it out. Please share it with your friends. Um, uh, Ian, uh, the kit that I recommend is the middle kit. Um, uh, I mean, it's just in terms of affordability, if you want to, uh, you know, to get it, you know, and, and the thing is, is like when it comes to testosterone, you can go get really deep in terms of the free testosterone, blah, 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 blah. When it comes down to it, you still in order for all of them to, rot, to, to go up, you still have to be healthy. So it is good to get as much information as possible. Sometimes too much information is eh. <laughs> are, are you going to be able to use it? So that's the one I recommend. Um, don't have the pricing off the top of my head, but that's the one I would recommend. Um, the other uh, webinars we have, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to be talking about which exercises to work on, which ones to stop, which ones to start. Uh, that's very important. Um, and we may actually have a vegan bodybuilder who's going to join us uh, in terms of helping us understand that. Um, erections on demand lifestyle. Um, they, 
we're going to take everything that we're saying and it's like, how can you turn this into a lifestyle? Um, and also we're going to talk about the supplements, pills and medications. Um, and I think that's very important for a lot of folks because they're getting these medications. They're getting uh, way too many medications and they're part of the what I call the magical pill society, which is like someone and it. it you know, you know, that doesn't make any sense for someone to walk. In, hey, just take this pill. Now, all the things that caused you to have this problem, what you're eating, how you're sleeping, um, your lack of activity, everything, do not worry about that. Just keep that up. But keep taking this pill for the rest of your life. I, I call that the magical pill society because that's they're looking at like it's a magical pill when in actuality, as we all know, the pharmaceutical companies want us to keep coming back. That's how you make your money as a drug dealer. <laughs> repeat customers. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll be, we'll get deep into that. And so the next webinar will be on April 9th. Um, we will be sending out the information so you, you know, you can get all of that. Uh, every month we're going to be uh, adding on information. And of course, please make sure if you haven't done it already, uh, go to AfricanFly.com. You can go to Fly Zones and, you know, sign up for that uh, to make sure you get the email information. And also make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Brian Ayers, B-R-I-A-N-A-Y-E-R-S. Just look that up and you'll see me and just go ahead and sign up. And we'll make sure you get the information. And also, um, just for staying on board, I do want to offer everybody a uh, coupon code for African Fly, which is AF25. Uh, you get 25% off. Um uh, <laughs> Joe asked, can my wife join on the vegan bodybuilder? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we want to get this information out to as many people as possible. Um, but as far as African Fly is concerned, obviously, like I said before, we've been selling this for 20 years. It's a great product. It works. I highly recommend it. But I'm going to say something that you don't hear from folks too often, which is this information I'm giving you is how you can stop using African Fly. <laughs> and there's a reason why uh, we do this as a philosophy, as a company. One that just, you know, that's just helpful uh, because we don't want you to have any of these issues. But two, as humans, we wiped out entire plant species, entire animal species, just so we can have an erection, just so we can. We don't need to do that. Um, there are billions of people right now who have health issues, who have sexual health issues, and we don't want to wipe out, you know, the ginger supply, the clove supply <laughs> uh, around the world just so we can. So, you know, we're going to give you the product. The product is going to help you. It can accelerate the process of improving. But at the same time, you're going to get the, the information so you can change up your lifestyle. So you can you, you can use it as needed or not needed at all. Just recommend it to a friend. We'd appreciate it. So, yeah, uh, go ahead and grab that coupon code. Go to AfricanFly.com, uh, place your order, and we will get the product to you. And this is uh, a limited time offer, so it's going to be expiring uh, soon. Um, so, yeah, go ahead and check that out. And, of course, we give you more information. Um, you know, we have the maximum re maximum results guide. Uh, that will take you through the whole process of taking African fly and what to expect and how to how to take it, the best ways to take it, et cetera, et cetera. And um, for you guys who are interested in that testosterone kit, uh, you can go to this website, try LGC, that's try let's get checkcom backslash airs, A Y E R S, and uh, just use a coupon, uh, coupon code of 20 uh, of airs, A Y E R S, for 20 percent off. And I do have a challenge for you. Um, just like I mentioned before, I got the test, made some changes and can see the results. I think, you know, knowing where you're starting, obviously that's really important, but setting uh, a goal for yourself. Um, so, you know, if you want to order two kits, do a before and after test, I would highly recommend that. Uh, not only from just knowing, but once I got my results back, oh, I was on it. <laughs> I was like, oh, my testosterone went up 104 points. I, I, what else can I do? What? How can I get even better? Um, and, you know, that led up to this challenge that I'm doing with my friends um, in terms of changing up our diet and everything like that to see how high you can get. There is, I can say this without hesitancy, there is a marked improvement on how you feel and how you function. I actually think clearer now. Uh, I have less anxiety. Um, it, it does make a huge difference. 
Uh, Kirk asked that good question. Can my wife and I both take it? Yes. Yes. African fly is for men and for women. Um, it helps increase your testosterone levels and increase blood flow to the genital regions. Um, that's why one of the side effects of your hand and your feet will feel cooler. Um, but you know, for women, they have less testosterone than men. You know, we typically have 10 times more testosterone than women do, but testosterone is necessary for the, uh, for desire for lubrication for, I mean, men and women have testosterone and estrogen just in obviously varying proportions. So with the issue of there being too many estrogens in our environment, not enough uh, 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 in our lifestyle leading to less testosterone, that affects women as well. Oprah used to call it the silent, silent epidemic. Now it's a very loud, silent <laughs> epidemic because people still don't talk about this uh, enough. And typically because there's few answers. The, the answer is always take this drug. Um, obviously, I would like for you to take African fly so you can have the positive results, but you have to make those lifestyle changes so that, you know, they stick and that it moves, you know, you can accelerate the speed of the improvement. Well, uh, Lisa asked, will African fly help a postmenopausal woman's sex drive? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it will, from the standpoint of it helps release inhibitions, uh, you know, as guys with testosterone, we tend to be more uh, aggressive, things of that nature. Uh, this will help with that process also. Uh, I tell the story of, you know, having, uh, you know, a female friend years ago, uh, she wanted to try some African fly and it was like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, we had never done anything before. You know, she added some African fly to her drink and she became entirely aggressive, <laughs> way more aggressive than I thought <laughs> it was possible. And I, I now understood when women say, oh, you're being too aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, no, was a foreign word to her all of a sudden. So uh, <laughs> it, it does have a strong effect. I'm not saying that's going to happen every time, but it does have a, a sometimes stronger effect on women because they're not used to that level of testosterone in their system. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm make sure I get all the questions answered. Yes. Got you. Okay. I hope I answered that question for everybody. So uh, please, if you have any questions, go ahead and, and put that to, to me right now. Um, uh, while you're thinking of your questions, I do want to say this. I want to thank everyone for hopping on board and joining us with this webinar. Um, please spread the word. We need for as many people as possible to get this information. We are not in a natural situation right now. Um, during this webinar series, I'm talking about sleep. I'm talking about uh, the foods that you eat. I'm talking about the exercise, talking about relaxing yourself. I'm talking about the medications and you know supplements and everything like that. This is a wide ranging conversation because we're so far away from the, the world as it naturally was before. Um, we're not getting the exercise. We're not getting the sleep. All these things add up. There isn't one answer. I've done television interviews before and they'll you know, inevitably at the end of the interview, there's always that what's the one thing you would tell people to do? There isn't one thing. Um, you could do one thing, but if you're doing all, everything else bad, it's not a good situation. Uh, Joe, I got you. I have friends that want to watch, but can't at work. We're actually looking at changing our time uh, because of that situation right there, Joe. Thanks for, uh, for, for pointing it out and, and encouraging us to go in that direction. We're looking to move it towards the evening times at, uh, at about a good 1.30. I'm sorry, 1.30. Uh, good 6 o'clock, 6.30, so we can get uh, more guys uh, and ladies uh, on this so we can we can learn is is hugely important. Um, and, and yeah, yeah, we'll look for different days. We're looking for the optimum time to get as many, uh, folks on board with this as possible. So, um, definitely, uh, we're, we're looking forward to the next webinar. Uh, like I said before, uh, if you want more information, go to africanfly.com. 
Um, you can actually go there, sign up for Fly Zones. You can also, uh, if you have some questions, uh, we have a form there. You can ask some questions uh, that that if you're you know want to get to me uh, with that question, I, I, I try to answer as many questions as possible. If you go to YouTube, go to Brian Ayers, B R I A N A Y E R S. Sign up there. I'm constantly in the comment sections, um, trying to answer questions. If the question is a little bit too complicated for that situation you know i'll try to uh get to you in another way so um and also just letting you know uh we do have uh we'll be offering coaching sessions coming soon uh, i do have my own personal clients that i take care of um but we're trying to open it up and trying to help as many people as possible so uh let me see uh brad let me get, check out this question is there uh, Joe asks, is there a replay link that will be coming out uh, soon? Uh, yeah, yeah, please share the replay, uh, definitely. Uh, Brad asks, when do you think that someone with the uh, testosterone levels of an old man will begin to see spontaneous erections? All right. While eating right, exercising, and taking the right amount of African fly, how many months do you think it would take? Um, it really does depend upon your level of sexual health. Uh, you know, Age, age ain't nothing but a number. Uh, you know, I always make the distinction between age and how old you are. How old you are is the number of times you've gone around the sun. Uh, your age is your level of health. So, um, you know, there are guys who are in their 60s and 70s who are bodybuilders, like competing bodybuilders. So, you know, it just depends on where you are. And I'm not saying necessarily that because you're at that age as a bodybuilder that you're completely healthy. There's some things that you can still be doing wrong or the inside, you just look great on the outside. Uh, but it does depend on your level of sexual health when you start. So with that said, um, as the chef mentioned, it can your body would just go through the process of healing itself. It doesn't necessarily go in the direction that we want. Uh, one of the first things you'll notice is that your skin will get better. Uh, but after that, you know, if you had some aches and pains, that's going to go first. Uh, you know, your body it's not worried about what you think <laughs> you may want the erection, but your body's like, uh, but you may need to walk first. Uh, you may need to make sure your hip is not thrown out. So it's going to take some time. Um, uh, but you know, that's the reason why we say this, we're looking for this to become a, a lifestyle. If this was a lifestyle for you, this is something that is going to repair itself. As long as you are alive, as long as you're not in a, a steep decline in health, something that's you can't come back from, you can change. This story has happened hundreds of times uh, where people have just gone from like, oh, I wasn't working at it all till I just decided to change up everything. And now I'm in my 60s and 70s. And, you know, I can I can walk. I got friends who can who are wheelchair bound, et cetera, et cetera. So you can make those changes. Definitely. Uh, just to let you guys know, the, the replay link will be available two hours after the, the webinar. Uh, we will follow up with all attendees with that link. And uh, Joe, uh, you need that coaching. We're going to make sure we get that information to you. Uh, I have my team on here on the call with me to make sure we handle and get all of that information, uh, your information, so we can get some information to you. So uh, whew, hold on one second. Mm. I had to refresh my electrolytes right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Please hit me up really quick. We do want to. Uh, I, I want to respect everyone's time here. Uh, but yeah, we'll definitely get the webinars uh, information out to everyone. Uh, we're looking at changing up the time. Uh, our our job here is to educate as much as we possibly can, and that is exactly what we're going to do. So uh, without any other questions, uh, we're actually going to leave this chat room open for a little bit just so you can uh, ask some more questions. And we'll just get to you, get back to you on the back end. Um, but if that's it, hey, I want to thank each and every one of you for hopping on board. Uh, we look forward to doing this again. I always have fun. Uh, as you can tell, I have a lot of information in my head. I'm trying to get out. <laughs> so this is actually therapeutic for me. Uh, Mm-hmm. Oh, if uh Joe, Joe, yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. If it's offered later, it would be cool too. Hey, uh, I'm with you on that. We're looking for that perfect time. So we got you. We got you. 
So with that said, like I said before, look out for the upcoming webinars, uh, the coaching, the uh, the 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 lifestyle changes, uh, the things we put doing. We're doing a lot of things. <laughs> we're doing a lot of things to help you out. So stay tuned for that. And with that said, uh, thanks again. And I look forward to talking to you guys again soon, too. Thanks, Kirk. Appreciate you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everybody.